So we've got our hair moving, and if we zoom in, we've got each of these clumps, but they're all quite small, and they all look quite linear uh, and quite uniform. And if we rendered this, we'd have these weird little clumps coming out of her head. So now we can go in. Once we've effect, uh, once we're sort of happy with how the hair's moving, we can now go in and edit how the hair is looking. And we can just move up to this clump and hair shape tab here. Now hairs per clump, we're not going to edit that just yet. All that does, if I zoom in here, as you see each of these lines, that is basically a hair. So we've got 10 hairs per clump, so there's just 10 of these on these. Now we're not going to ramp that up just yet. We're going to leave that as it is. Again, turning up settings like that will influence the actual playback of the simulation. Subsegments, that is just going to soften. See how that just bend, the bend there was quite rigid. We just soften that up. Again, that's something we can edit later when we come to rendering. We're not going to edit any of those first set just yet, apart from clump width. If I turn that up, you see the base of the clump is getting wider and getting thinner. And that is filling out the base of the hair. So let's make that a little bit wider. Let's maybe make that 1.5. So that's looking a bit better. And the hair is now filling out the top of the head. The hair width we're going to leave because that, again, that is more a rendering thing. But what we can do is we can go in and we can edit the way the clumps work um, and just refine them a little bit more. And we can go down here. Now we edited the clump width and now we have a clump width scale just below it. And you'll notice there's lots of these little graphs for a lot of the options. Basically all this will do is it will say the scale at the beginning here, if you see as I adjust this, it's getting shorter and getting wider. That is basically this value here. So that is 1.5 and as it's getting towards the end of the hair it's getting smaller so it's thinning out the clump. If I make that bigger you'll see the ends of the clumps get wider. If I make that shorter they come to a nice little point. Now you've got those two points there you can also click and add in other points. So we could maybe start the hair off thin, make the clump wide and then it goes thin again or we can add in lots more of these and vary how each clump is looking. So you can end up with some weird and wonderful effects. What we're going to do is just we're just going to concentrate. We'll maybe start it off wide, keep it wide for quite a while, and then maybe it tapers off towards the end. And if you want a bit more control over this, you can make each point, you can change how smooth these uh, these move into each other. You can also click on this button here, which will open up a bigger version of the uh, the graph, which you can then go in and just closely, just refine this a little bit more. So we could select this and we could maybe set that to linear, set it to non, smooth, although that doesn't appear to be changing much. We'll leave it as smooth for now, but that should update and make that a lot sharper or a lot smoother. So you can play around with your clump width. We could make that wider or thinner and it's just going to update according to this graph. So what else can we play around with? Hair width scale, again, we're not going to worry about that because that is to do more with rendering. You won't see anything updating here and we'll look at rendering in the next video. Let's just go work our way down. Clump curl, this is exactly what you would expect it to do. This will add curls to the clumps. So if I increase that, you can see we've got curls here. So if you want your hair curly, you'd adjust this. Perhaps you want it to be not curly at the base, so 0 0.5. Because um, 0 will sort of reverse the curl, 1 will do a positive curl. So maybe it doesn't start curly, but towards the tips it gets curly. 
like so. Clump flatness. Now what this will do is it will just, at the moment the clumps are circular from the base out. All this will do is just flatten each of those clumps. So if we ramp that up, each of those is now flat rather than round. As you can see on the head there, if I zoom in a little bit, it's flat. So there are options there for if you want the fringe to maybe come down over her head and you want that part to be flat, you can adjust that. Now at the moment, all these are affecting every clump. Now, not wanting to get too advanced, you can go in and refine each clump on its own so that it has its own properties um, away from what the global properties are. But again, that's more of an advanced thing to look at and we'll probably look at that in another tutorial if we do a, a more advanced look at hair and cloth. So clump flatness. Let's just skip down. Obviously we have our collisions here. We could turn that off and again that speeds up because we know we're not using collisions. But if you wanted to, you could have the hair colliding with itself for a bit more of a realistic look and feel. At the moment it's not going to be doing much. But we're not interested in the collisions at the moment, so we're going to just skip over that. So that's pretty much the, the basics again of just setting up that hair. We've added it into the scene. We've adjusted the properties. We've adjusted look at uh, we've looked at uh, editing the clumps um, and all sorts of little tweaks here and there. And again, just like the cape. You should maybe go in now and just start playing around with these. Oh, we've come to our, the end of our animation there. Let's go back to the beginning. Interactive playback. So yeah, just play around with these values. Continue to tweak them until you're getting the hair more... Concentrate more on how the hair is moving and looking in the viewport. Um, and then when you're happy, we'll jump into the next video uh, and then we'll start to look at how to get the hair rendered.